so since doing my last video on Blue Protocol, the team behind the game have since released kind of like an all-encompassing news article on their website discussing not only player feedback, but also general thoughts and their opinions on changes for the direction of the game and their upcoming closed beta. So I just want to take a few minutes of your time today to just go through and discuss the changes and attempt to kind of condense it into as digestible a format as possible. Before I do though, if you haven't already, then I have a guide showing you how to apply for the closed beta on my website, mmobite.tv. Go ahead and click the link in the description and the pinned comment to be taken right to it. We also have a dedicated subreddit for Blue Protocol where we post all kinds of news and info about the game ahead of these videos. So if you're interested in staying updated, the link will be included to the subreddit as well. Go ahead and join it. Now, the Blue Protocol team are actually going to be holding their next live stream on Thursday, February 20th at 8 p.m. GMT plus 9. You'll have to convert that time to whatever time zone you're in, but it'll likely be several hours after this video goes live. In it, they're going to be further elaborating on the game with one final live stream happening before the closed beta takes place that's probably going to happen sometime next month. Now, they have broken the update into several different parts. Character creation, combat, classes, exploration, sound, dungeon, questing, UI, and crafting. I'm going to go ahead and merge some of these together to make it a little easier to digest. Initially, during the alpha test, the character customization was somewhat limited. During the closed beta, they are going to be adding additional hairstyles, alterations to current hairstyles, facial options like scars and makeup. Additionally, they are providing further customization to character bodies, allowing you to set them minimum height lower than what was previously available. Yeah, that likely means that lolly characters are probably going to be creatable now. They've also added body shapes with additional body types and face types in the future. They also have plans on expanding customization options periodically throughout the course of the development process. Finally, there will be costumes in game with accessories capable of being worn on additional body parts in the future such as head, eyes, cheeks, ears, and up to seven other slots. They're currently working on quite a few enemy-related AI changes. Players reported that the enemies seemed relatively weak, easy, and required no strategy to engage. To combat this, they're working on having enemies team up more commonly, adding new types of damage, and even scaling damage altogether to make encounters more threatening and dangerous. They've added the option to disable special effects for skills if they're too flashy for you. They've also made changes to both the climbing animations and the running animations after hearing the negative feedback from some players. Sprinting will now automatically sheath your weapon. They've changed how enemy aggression is displayed. It's also been confirmed that enemies will not drop weapons, instead dropping materials to craft items to strengthen weapons and other items. During the alpha, players were grouped with higher level players that made dungeons too easy. Going forward, content in dungeons will scale your level and gear down to an appropriate level. Dungeons were also buffed for full six-man groups. After completing a dungeon, you're sent to the last town you were in as opposed to the last map you were in. This is different for main scenario dungeons. Each class has had a new skill added to their repertoire. The Aegis Fighter has a Holy Attribute AoE, the Twin Striker has a Fire Attribute skill, the Blast Archer has an Earth Attribute CC skill, and the Spellcaster, like the Twin Striker, has a Fire Attribute skill. There have been new builds added, allowing for players to choose a route to take for their character. To complement this, new skill options have been added to allow further growth in your direction of choice, such as a Tanky Aegis Fighter or a High Damage Aegis Fighter. In the Alpha, you could only take a single class advancement quest. In the Beta, you'll be able to take the advancement quest for all classes. They finally decided to add fall damage, which is one of the most commonly complained about things during the alpha. They altered the detection range for enemy monsters along with their spawns. Due to this change, they're not making alterations to stamina depletion while in combat. They've also added additional warp portals, however neglected to elaborate on how many exactly. They're reducing the time it takes to gather. They're also working on improving sounds during combat and altering various types of music found throughout the game. When within towns, HP bars are now going to be hidden along with the ability to hide your weapon. There will also be the option of displaying the HUD without a combat outside of towns. After considering enabling the map to remain open while moving, they have since opted to make no changes to that. However, urgent missions, which are now going to be called challenge quests, will be displayed on the minimap. Additionally, there will be no minimaps within dungeons due to the design choices. Honestly, that, that's a little weird for me, but I mean, you know what? I, maybe they're not necessary. Wait times for warp portals have been reduced from 10 seconds down to 5 seconds. Since Blue Protocol uses segregated zones and channels, players within parties will get priority when entering new areas. Finally, they have added customization options to enable you to have more freedom over the look of your UI. Now, in the upcoming stream, they are going to be talking about additional closed beta content, raids and raid bosses, the PvP arena, 
class roles and skills, the story, mounts, and new areas. But otherwise, that is all the information we have right now since last time I spoke about it. If you want to learn more about the next set of updates after the live stream that's happening within the very near future, then go ahead and join our subreddit. Otherwise, just, you know, like, wait until my next video, which is probably going to be in, like, maybe a few days, maybe next week sometime. Hopefully you guys are as excited about this as I am. But this is my opinion, my impressions of the latest set of news pertaining to Blue Protocol. What do you guys think, though? Let me know down in the comments below, and let's talk about it. Anyway, guys, that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you all next time. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it.